Hello there. Welcome to the Prophet's Corner. This is a new program that we have just begun. I think we have several others that you might want to uh, might want to look at. I think they'll be a blessing to you. But what our purpose here is not necessarily to talk about what we feel God is saying about today as much as it is to explore the office of the prophet, those that move in prophetic giftings, um, and also from a pastor's perspective. So we've actually had a pastor on, what, what do you feel about the prophetic <laughs> in, in, uh, in a, from a pastor's perspective? So you have to be careful which pastor you ask. <laughs> no, just kidding. <laughs> but, um, but we have had a lot of fun with the Prophet's Corner. And I am so excited to have with us one of my favorite people, Monica Johnson. She is a, a reverend, Reverend Monica Johnson. She is an incredibly gifted individual. She's been in ministry for many years. She's a, an associate pastor. Um, she has sung. She's a, a prophetic psalmist that you will not believe. In fact, let me tell you about one of our, our prophetic worship CDs. She, she figures largely in a lot of these because this series is Firestorm Prophetic Worship. And Heaven is Moving is our latest um, CD, and they are live recorded on our our uh, uh, per, our conferences. I'm sorry, my mind my mind's going faster than my mouth. <laughs> um, but they're they're recorded live in our conferences, Firestorm Houston. You can find live uh, recordings on our YouTube channel, Firestorm Houston YouTube. But this, this series, these are songs from heaven. These are songs that have never been sung before, mostly. We do have, every now and then, we'll have a, a, a written song. But they are full of throne room anointing. You can experience the, the worship around the throne in these CDs. So I just encourage you, you can download them from our website, um, celebrationministries.com. You can get them on all of the live streaming, I mean, the music streaming, um, Spotify, uh, Amazon Music, all of that. So just wanted to let you know that Monica will be singing as well. She's she's sung with us for, I think it's 30 something conferences yeah. now. And it's been, it's been an, an, an amazing journey yes, in the presence of the Lord. Mm -hmm. And so I want to uh, just ask Monica some interesting uh, perspectives of what it's like. She, the Lord uses her in prophetic. Of course, uh, she can. The Lord uses her to read people's mail, so to speak. <laughs> so personal prophecy, but corporate prophecy. She's uh, sung remarkable prophetic songs, and then what? I, one of the things, my favorite things about you. I like a lot of things about you, but one of my favorite things is when we're in a conference setting with hundreds of people present and being live streamed and and the Holy Spirit will come on you and you'll begin to sing the song of heaven, which is a song we've never sung before. The musicians, you know, be playing. But then it's almost like a, a spirit of, of intercession mm -hmm. and sometimes corporate intercession will come. So let's just talk a little bit about that part. The, okay. the, the psalmist prophetic anointing and how the Lord uses you like that. Can you remember maybe one of the first times that happened, maybe in one of our earlier conferences or um, um, or just, just what it was like in the beginning? To what be it was like in the beginning is really just, is this real? <laughs> you know, there's a part of your mind that goes, is this real? Am I making it up? Yeah. But really what you want to do is position yourself to hear Father. And when you hear it, be willing to step out and see what you're hearing. Right. And sometimes that is, I mean, sometimes he'll just drop in my mind, uh, pray for the president. So a song may come forth oh, I love about that. the White House or yeah. about the president and his staff or, uh, or about 
the parties or whatever, and you just start flowing with that, and he'll take it on a take it on a journey almost. Yeah, it's interesting because when you, it's like those of you that move in the prophetic, um, you can the Lord will start out one way, mm -hmm. and you know where your brain might say do this or this is about this. You have to like turn your brain off. How do you do that? That's hard. <laughs> <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> because you literally have to say, this is not me. God, mm -hmm. what are you saying? Mm -hmm. And I only want to be in your vein, in right. your flow, right. in your river. Mm -hmm. But also knowing <clears throat> that the mysteries are for us to know. And so I expect him to speak. I expect him to give that's direction. Per that's powerful. And, and so I'm like, God, I know you're going to help us go this way, whatever it is. So I'll just step out with what I'm hearing. And yeah. you have helped me. You have been so instrumental. I say she's my goader. <laughs> through the years, she has goaded me into it. And there would be times that I'm holding back and you would know that I have something. And you would go, you, you point to me. And at that very moment, I have a choice. I could tell you no, <laughs> which I never do. Exactly. <laughs> I just go, okay, God, what I've been hearing Mm -hmm. is what you're telling me it's time to release. Exactly. And then I'll just step out. Because it's a confirmation. It's a confirmation for me. Yeah, but mm -hmm. you don't always have that confirmation. You don't always have that confirmation, so you have to be willing to step out on the water and exactly. trust that he's going to lead you through it. And when you say <laughs> two things, one is concentration, not, not watching people, not thinking what are they going to think, mm -hmm. you know, and the second is a serious ability to to um, to move no matter where he goes. Right. You know. And that doesn't just start on the stage. Exactly. That starts in your personal time with That's Father. That's exactly right. Because if you're not doing it there, you're not going to have anything to do on the stage. You know, it's so interesting <laughs> you said that because long time ago when I was first beginning to move in the spirit, Mm -hmm. I, I would hear these evangelists and, and one, one in particular woman, she would say, if it don't work at home, don't talk about it when you're traveling. <laughs> <laughs> but it's the truth. It is. Because you, you spend time, that's where you're training your ear to hear mm -hmm. and where you know, ooh, that, that's him. I'm supposed to step out because you're doing it at home. Right. In the privacy of your closet or what right. have you, you know, right. or in your car. You don't have to just be at home. But if exactly. you are taking time to spend time with mm -hmm. Father, to pray in the Spirit, sing in the Spirit, and just allow, you're building yourself up. Exactly. And then it's a, a place where you kind of trust yourself in that because you trust Him in you exactly. in, that, in that time. So it's a come prayed up thing. It is. Come prayed up. It's a come being willing to partner with Father. Now, I have had the experience, of, yes, of all of that, but there are times when I feel cold as ice. Yeah. I feel like God <laughs> has gone on vacation. <laughs> He's out getting a cup of coffee. Uh, the heavens are brass. Uh, and that yet I'm on, I'm on the microphone. Mm -hmm. what, what do you do then? You trust the Jesus in you. That's it. That's it. I will sometimes even, uh, we know that Jesus is the door, right? right? Right. And so there's times that I'll visualize him right there and me stepping into him and through him mm -hmm. and getting a different perspective. And whether I feel it or not, I'm like, God, I'm trusting that you're the door here right. for this meeting, for right. this time, right. for whatever reason, right. you're the door. So I'm going to step through you and hear what you're saying and I'm going to release it. Exactly. That's, that's, that's so true. You know, we were talking uh, before we began uh, the program and we were talking about how uh, when you, when you, you, you start and you, you begin, there's, there's a, uh, kind of like a re uh, going into the spirit mm -hmm. every time. Every Sometimes time. it's harder. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's easier. But there's there's literally a going going away from the world, shutting all the world down, mm -hmm. and beginning to uh, beginning to literally go deep. That the kingdom of heaven is in, in us. us. Jesus is in us. The hope of glory, etc. So that is that is really a, a powerful thing. So let's let's shift a little bit and talk about what was it like 
can you remember one of the first times you had to prophesy? Like, yes, oh. of course I can. <laughs> <laughs> it's in one of your meetings, probably, or in. I went through your school of prophets. Okay, yeah, and that's and you would have us to prophesy, and so I think, um, I would say that fine tuned me, because before I prophesied, but I wasn't really sure if it was God, and I know I made mistakes. We right. all do when you're right. first starting. Um, or when you're finishing. Or when you finish it, it doesn't matter. <laughs> we, yeah, but, but you we do. all make mistakes. We all make mistakes. Yeah. And so I was scared spitless. And I'm like, I don't want to say the wrong thing. I don't want to mess this person up. You know, you yeah, just, exactly. all of those thoughts go through your mind. But what I've learned through the years, it's like walking on water. It is. It really is. It's like you have to trust, even though you're scared, and a part, some of it could be fear and nerves, but a lot of it is the fear of the Lord, you know, the fear of his holiness. And That's his good. Power. That's really and good. You really don't want to just be a loose cannon out there. You want to hear and know that his father and you want to release what he gave you. Right. And not do it in your own personality where it's going to be. This is what Monica is saying and what I think, I, you know, how I'm trying to interpret it. Exactly. But and in the beginning, I did that. Yeah. And so, <laughs> and then so you I kill yourself, and you kill yourself afterward, thinking, "Oh no, I can't believe <laughs> I, I said up. that. Why would I?" Because <laughs> I got in the way. Yeah. Your mind wants to really get in the way. Yeah. And it, and it wants to protect you. It wants to protect others. All of that stuff. And yeah. so you really have to say, "Okay, I'm checking my mind a little bit," you know, and just trusting God in this, and you step forward. Yeah. And so I remember the first times. Yeah, my flesh got in it a lot. <laughs> And then I learned. Right. And I even went back and corrected that. Did you? Some people. That's yeah. interesting. So you went back and said, well, I'm so sorry, but I missed it I in think this I area. I missed it in this area. Yeah. Uh -huh. So that brings up the whole thing about being completely teachable. Yes. With no pride, no, you know, the whole point is for God to bring people to another level in knowing mm -hmm. Christ. Exactly. That's the whole point behind that. This isn't, this isn't a pride thing of, I can tell you what street you live on. Well, I hope God knows where I live. <laughs> exactly. You know, but yeah. but yeah, so that's, that's really important. That's one of the things that we, we try to emphasize is always be correctable and teachable, and, teachable. and willing mm -hmm. to say, you know, if, you know, what about the times when somebody, uh, you prophesy and you know, you feel pretty sure it's the Lord. And then they say, that's not God and so on and so <laughs> forth. What do you do then? I had to learn to have a face of Flint because prophecy could be for right now, but it could be for, the, and I mean, most of the time it is for the future. Yeah. And it is to encourage. And I've had people time and time again to come back and say, that did not resonate with me mm -hmm. until five years ago, or that didn't resonate with me until a month ago or yeah. two months ago. Yeah. When you first said it, I said, I'm putting that on the shelf, whatever that means to people. I, exactly. I don't like that term too much that I'm putting God's word on the shelf. But it is a place where you go, God, I don't know about this, mm -hmm. but I'm going to hold it in my hand and I'm not going to have an opinion about it. Right. That's the thing that we mess up. When we have an opinion about it, then you can't really hear God in it. Exactly. But if you hold that word loosely and go, okay, God, is there some truth in this? Is this what you're really saying? Mm -hmm. But I'm holding it like you're panning for gold. You know, you dip in and you're panning for gold and you are willing to let things fall through the hands. Exactly. Then you are you position yourself to hear yeah. and not have an opinion about it where you truly can hear. Yeah, Because when absolutely. you have an opinion, you're stuck. Oh, you're stuck. You're and stuck. then pride gets and into pride it. pride gets in it, yes. You know. And with us too, you release it and they, they look at you like, nah. <laughs> It's true. Then you have to go, God, I trust you in that. Right. I trust you with that process. It's almost like the mailman at that point. Mm -hmm. The mailman is not responsible for when he brings you those bills, how those bills are <laughs> going to get paid. The mailman's job is to make sure you get those bills. I love it. And so that's how I, love I that. have to look at it at times that that's not that's between you and father. Right. I'm being obedient to release what he gave me. But what you do with it is really between you and him. That's really good. You know, one of the things that I've I've learned over so many years is when that happens, particularly this hasn't thankfully happened too many times, but when they are sh are strong and they mm -hmm. say, no, this is not God. I always say, listen, if I have missed it, I, please forgive me. It was yeah. never my intention, you know, mm -hmm. to cause any harm or whatever. Because 
it's it's not my response. I won't say it's not my responsibility, but it's God. If it's the if it's the word of the Lord, it's going to work. It's going to work. I mean, it's God's going to do it. Yes. So it's it's not um, not my circus, not my monkey. No. Uh, <laughs> It, it, we do have to ta have accountability, which mm -hmm. is why I say I'm so sorry if this is, is you know, I may have missed it. Yeah. Because it, it really, um, from, I was, I was careful to do what I felt God told, told me to, to do. do. So then my job is done. Right. But I must release them from being offended mm -hmm. so that That's later really on, good. Yeah. Later on, when it when it works, and they and they could they go, oh, I can't believe this, and then sometimes they'll let you know. M many times you they never don't. find out. <laughs> what would you say would be one of the most amazing times when, when you you know you basically read people's mail, and then later it came to pass, and they they just uh, was a life changing type of thing. I know that's happened. A num it has. It has happened a number of times, but. One of the things that happened, um, it was more, I would say, a word of knowledge in, in, yeah, in the situation. Which is, yeah. Because prophecy is for encouragement and comfort mm -hmm. and um, exhortation. Mm -hmm. And we were in Africa. Okay. And um, we got to go to this church with this youth pastor. It was me and the two young ladies. They got yeah. to go with me. And we began to prophesy. And people were going crazy in the room because there was stuff that we knew. No, nobody. There was no, there, there was to, no way to know that stuff. Yeah, exactly. And you saw the people just explode because a lot of, some of it was confirmation. Right. For them. Mm -hmm. These were, you know, and they just went berserk. It was so exciting. Isn't that and that fun? just charges you even more. I'm You're like, ready. Rip me the next person. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I was like, yeah, exactly. It's so exciting. I know. I love it. Every last one of them almost. It was like probably. 500 people crammed in this little Ooh. space. We had very little space. And I remember the young girls that were with me. And I'm like, guys, I can't prophesy all these people. You're going to prophesy. You can do it. And, and they were, there they and were just, really they scared. Were scared <laughs> but they just began to release. Yeah. And it was just so cool. That was probably my most memorable time. And it's not that you got to see it all come to pass. But what you did get to get is confirmation of what you were giving was truth about exactly. that person and where they were going, and it was confirmation to them, and everybody knew it, and exactly. that was exciting. Now, so so that brings up when these girls, you know, they may not have had the gift that you had, but because your authority mm -hmm. was there, just in in just expand on that a little bit. Well, you have even taught this that uh, when someone is in the office of a prophet and they release their anointing that others underneath them. I mean, we, we experienced that in our conferences too, mm -hmm. that there's such a prophetic flow that comes forth. A gnat can prophesy. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> Mickey <laughs> Mouse, <laughs> Mickey <laughs> Mouse, <laughs> that's true. <laughs> because you're under that canopy of prophecy yeah. and that anointing, you're gonna hear the atmosphere is charged with it. It's true. That you just pick it up. It's, it's, it's true. It's like you're fine tuning a radio. Yeah. And you begin to pick up the frequency of what's of that station. It's true. That's how it really, I mean, it's like it's the true. waves have been there, but now someone or a group of people, even with their synergy, have released the prophetic flow. And now all these people are tuning in and they're, they're picking up it, on that. It is remarkable. Yeah. It is remarkable. I will never forget that one of those same trips. Um, our friend Lizzie was, <laughs> I was, I was going to make everybody get 10 minutes to prophesy. And we had like maybe six or eight people mm -hmm. that were going to prophesy. And she kept saying, I don't have anything. I don't have anything. I don't have anything. <laughs> and I said, I handed her the microphone and she took the microphone going, I don't have anything. And she went, and then the Lord <laughs> says, blah, blah, blah. I think we all were scared spitless she that day. Was, <laughs> she but, was right on, on sharp as a tack. Yes. I mean, it was incredible. It was. And so that, that, that just shows you, you know, the, the carnal mind was terrified, mm -hmm. sure that there was nothing she could do, but the, but the authority of God hit, hit her. her. 
And it was, in, it was. It was. And that also released others in the room to prophesy too. That's true. Because each one of us got up, you know, and had to speak. And we're all scared, you know. I know. And it was just, it was, that was a, a time too when you saw the synergy of prophecy and people were just able to release what God And the thing them. is, once, once like you, I hate to say the ball was rolling, but once the, the, the ball began to roll and, and the anointing mm -hmm. began to, then you couldn't shut everybody up. Right. I mean, one after another, after another, and this and this, and the Lord says, and this and this and this. And it was playing off of each other. It was awesome. It was incredible. Yeah. And that's happened many, many times. Times, you know, particularly in other nations where the where the the synergy of desperation, yeah. you know, the, the the sensitivity of the Lord, you uh -huh. know, was so strong and so powerful, mm -hmm. and uh, I, I I really really love that. I can say that happens also in prophetic worship. Yeah, yes. Our prophetic intercession. Yeah, yeah. Let's I, talk about that. There's many times because we've done it so long together yeah. and with Shawnee and different ones that have been a part of the uh, worship team that she'll have something and because she releases it then it's like oh I got another piece of that right you know right and you'll start in that and it'll, they'll just play off of each other like popcorn almost we we just begin to play off of each other and then you'll go sometimes you'll go in a different direction and sometimes it comes right back around to us exactly too, because god's not finished with it exactly it's really and cool it and fun. it moves uh in different uh fine-tuned things mm -hmm. so 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 talk a little bit about then the the don pope and the and the musicians and the way the, the musicians will then take over mm -hmm. and they'll go and then. Yeah, you have to be sensitive. Um, one thing that I learned, you're a part of a team. Correctly. And you mm -hmm. have to be sensitive to what the Lord is saying through different ones of the team. Anytime you're on a team, it's never competition. And I can remember in the earlier days, you'd feel like, oh, I don't have it like this person, or I don't have it like that person. And you get yourself so tied up in a knot that you yeah. can't release what your part is because you're looking at other people's part. Once you know what your table is and you release the stuff that's on your table, there's such a flow. And there's times when the musicians have it and you have to be sensitive to, oh, I don't need to release what I have right now. Right they have it and they're taking it in the direction and I've seen it where people are just sobbing just from the music. Right. Their lives are totally changed and shifted just from the sound that's being released through Steve or Don or Janet. They prophesy through their instruments. Right. And then there's times when the musicians will pull back because they know one of the psalmists have it. Exactly. And you just learn that it's an ebb and it's a flow. It's not competition, but we're all moving together like a flock of birds. You know how, yeah. they, how they just do yeah. this beautiful movement. Yeah. That's how it is. Yeah. And then that's the fullness of what God wants to release. Exactly. What he wants to release to the nation or the city. There's been times when we've released stuff to the city and we've released things to the nations or we've released things you know, in families, God would give a specific direction, but it was listening and you have such an ability to come right in and pull it all together. Yeah. You know, like this one could be here and here and you know it goes together and then you will come in with something and pull it all together. It's just a beautiful it is, way it is that a, it, a dance. It it's is a, a it dance. is, it is. It's, it's a, it's a, a, a dance of the heavenly worship and mm -hmm. this, this uh, this heaven is moving uh, thing that we did is is a remarkable because there is such right now across the across the earth yeah. there is such a moving of global things that are happening yes. and there's a war in the heavens mm -hmm. there's a war there's a war in the earth and so when we come together in some of these conferences then we begin to just allow the the angels uh, talk a little bit about the angels and the songs of the angels. Well, Paul says, if I speak with tongues of men and of angels, mm -hmm. we know that there is like an angelic tongue and we have sung in those tongues. We have spoken in those tongues. It is scriptural. It sounds weird to your ears. You have yeah. to get beside yourself because sometimes it's so funny. You just laugh yeah. and you keep going. You know? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Exactly. It's, it's strange because they're not in, someone said, they're not in our time 
and space dimension. That's true. And so it sounds different to the ear, but if you just relax in it, you'll get right in the flow and you'll hear what God's saying and you release. It's like the angels are being released and they're um, to come in and to really partner with us that's, during that time. That's so powerful. And I tell you, this has been remarkable that you and I can sometimes actually <laughs> sing and or even speak the same, same language, language. Yeah. that is that is the 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 you know the angelic languages mm -hmm. that we talked about and but the same language is remarkable it's remarkable it, it, it is and so we want to just uh, encourage all of you out there in the sound of our voice that we're going deeper and deeper into Jesus Christ yeah. and the kingdom of heaven and we are allowing the Lord to bring us deeper and deeper and deeper into that, that, that breathtaking part that is so aw away from anything that our mind could ever think of or, or th you know, we, we begin to allow ourselves to go deeper, deeper, deeper. And we don't think about um, you know how it sounds, what it what it should be like, and so in your in your times with the Lord, we want to get aside by yourself, and we just just to enc encourage you to get alone with the Lord and make some sounds, make sounds of of heaven, yeah. make sounds that you've never heard before. The the seraph the seraphim and the and the cherubim they make sounds that that we don't know what it is so allow the lord to begin to take us deeper with the lord wouldn't you say would so say, say a quick press pray, uh, prayer for our folks we okay. got about a minute left <laughs> okay father i just thank you um that there is a cry for deeper Mm -hmm. And I thank you that people are hungry for more. Yes, thank you, Lord. And it is all about encountering you, being mm -hmm. one with you, being mm -hmm. intertwined with you. Mm -hmm. And I just pray for those type of encounters thank and you, God. Uh, a positioning of people's lives to hear, yes. to see, yes. and to speak. Yes, amen. And so I just say, God, that um, as Bless people you, are hearing this, listening to this uh, message, that they really see and hear and be willing uh, for the Lord to speak to them, be willing for the Lord to speak through them and be willing to see what God wants to show them. Amen, amen. amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank, thank you. Lord. you. Well, thank you so much yeah, for being with so us. Fun. We've got to do this again. There's yes, never enough do. time. It's never enough time. It goes so, so fit, We quick. have enjoyed <laughs> being with you and God bless you. Amen. Amen. Beautiful. Beautiful.